be about those few moments and whether who's on top of who and the right of self-defense and whether or not the prosecution proved that George Zimmerman had hatred, ill will mm -hmm. towards Trayvon Martin so bad so evil to justify a second degree murder conviction and say that he had no self-defense available to him. And I, I think the prosecution failed to meet their burden of proof. Mm -hmm. And don't we already know that uh, Trayvon was on top of George Zimmerman, Bob? So now we have these conflicting reports. Kimberly mentioned this goes to the credibility of the witnesses that we've heard from, namely Trayvon's parents. What do you think of this 911 well, call that more people seem to be saying was the voice of Trayvon Martin? I don't know how anybody can tell what voice that was. And by, by the way, those people they brought in there to say it, it was his best friend. Some that guy was a wuss on the stand and started to cry. Was a, 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 some somebody who was close. They're all close to Zimmerman. Of course they're going to bring up the same. Of course they're going to say it was his voice. The fact still remains that Zimmerman was not being threatened. He had a couple of scratches in his back and a broken nose, and and he took out a gun and killed a kid. But if that was tra oh. if that was Zimmerman on the ta tape, back. Eric, he sounds yeah. like he's Let me uh, needed back some any help Bob here. That's that last guy was the star witness originally was a star witness for the prosecution. He became the star witness for the defense, basically saying when we asked Trayvon's father if that was Trayvon's voice on on the tape, and he said, I, "I'm not sure. I don't know." Now he's sure. Look, the bottom line: there's a burden of proof by the prosecution, as Kimberly points out. She doesn't believe they've met that. That burden of proof. Dan Abrams, you know, the, the well-respected uh, um, legal analyst for ABC says, you know what, he would be very surprised if they got a guilty Well, they could get a homicide. I mean, look, this guy had, had, had already been profiling black kids in that neighborhood. There's been a record of that. The guy was a okay. wannabe no, cop who didn't like black people. No, 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 that's an inaccurate statement. It is not there an inaccurate statement. There is no statement. record of him but profiling black kids. He turned in, in he called in no. black kids. No. no, he was a community organizer, essentially, patrolling that area. He was a wannabe cop to make that sure, that shouldn't have a gun. Excuse me, Bob, doing a neighborhood watch that he was signed up to do. So whoever comes in the area, if they act suspicious, regardless of color, you would consider that person if they were acting unusually in that area, especially because of the number of burglaries. I don't, I don't blame Bob's attitude for this, because this is the attitude that's been projected by the media for a year. There are 13,000 homicides. Why did the media focus on this one? Because it reflected a view of America that they wanted America to experience, that essentially America is nothing but a racist country, and this happens all over the place. But statistically, this case is an oddity. This doesn't happen. This is a rarity. If you look at the way crimes are committed, it's way different. The real victim is, the, the, the real verdict is that the media is guilty of falsely smearing America, which led then to violent backlashes across the country. There were like four or five different backlash uh, crimes based on this, um, if the press actually really did care about the two elements of this, of this uh, mm -hmm. case, which was race and handguns, they should focus on gang warfare, which has more, more than enough of that going on. But they don't look at that because that's not indicative of uh, uh, an endemic white American race problem. Yeah, but those gangs all have guns. Yeah, what I'm saying is, but it's not okay. indicative of white American racism. Can, can so they stay, ignore can, it. Can we stay on this for a second? Uh, I, I, go ahead. We have a yeah, real quick update. Just a moment ago in the courtroom, the judge did rule, and this went against a previous ruling by Judge Nelson, so it's a ruling for the defense, that evidence that Trayvon Martin had marijuana in his system at the time of this you know, altercation and ultimately his not, death. I'm not sure. That, that makes that, this case hold, hold even better. Can, can I point out, we've been saying this, I've been saying it here, that the, the real surprise in the case is that for a year the media has the, had their verdict. They had a guilty verdict for George Zimmerman. They had probably a, at least a second degree. But if it went up the media, it was a first degree murder yeah. charge and uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. And the surprise here and why it's so compelling now is you're waiting for that evidence to show up, and it just hasn't because, shown up. Because yeah. it was tried in the court of public opinion right. for months. The good news, though, again, is that, Kimberly, the court of public opinion does not matter. These juries only are hearing what's in front of them. And right. it strikes me that every time this investigator, Chris Siriano, takes the stand, he always seems to blow the prosecution's argument out of the water. Last week he took the stand, and he basically said that Zimmerman wasn't a liar. Now he's creating questions around Zimmerman's, or Trayvon's parents, I should say, about whose voice was on the 911 call. Right. Kimberly, I want to ask you about what Dan Abrams said as well. Mm -hmm. Eric brought that up. Abrams on ABC News today basically said this case is over with. Done. They're not getting murder, too, and they're not getting manslaughter. What do you think? Is this done? Well, based on the facts, the evidence that had been presented, 
presented to the jury, which before we had speculation. That's why everyone was making an opinion about what was going to happen or what went on on that night. Now we know the evidence is in, prosecution has rested, and I don't see how there's any way they're going to be able to arrive what? at a second degree, let alone a manslaughter, because they have failed to prove the requisite level of intent can, can, can on the can, part can of George point, Zimmerman. If, if this guy was stoned on marijuana, if people were stoned on marijuana are not all that aggressive. I mean, it, it, it's if uh, that's even a better case as far as I'm concerned. Why are you guys going in the tank for Zimmerman? What is, wait what, a what is it? Wait, wait, a second. I, wait, 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 Bob. I've sat here and, and heard you talk about the, the incredible power of modern marijuana, that it drives people crazy. No, you no, said stoned. that. No, no, they, but it drives them stoned. Crazy. Yes. Now, I just don't think people who are sold on that kind of good dope are going to take out. You don't even know how much he had, Bob. Yeah. How much was in his system? What kind of marijuana he was taking? So I don't understand how. By the way, hang I'm not in the tank for this. anybody here. And it's, I just. Yeah.